Hello and welcome. We're in the West Country getting up close and personal with Bath Rugby. Now, over the weekend, we saw one of the great traditional derby encounters between Bath and Gloucester. Both teams desperately needed the win, but it was the cherry and white that shaded a fiercely contested match. That left Bath in ninth place in the Aviva Premiership. Not where they would want to be, not where people would expect them to be. If they're going to climb, they're going to have to put in a lot of hard work. And we're here at their training grounds to see what they're going to do about it. Welcome to Guinness Behind the Badge. Well, the Six Nations took a break last weekend, allowing some of the national squad members some important time back at their clubs to get a bit of game time under their belt, but more importantly, allowing those returning from injury to try and impress Stuart Lancaster and get back into that national squad. None more so than Manu Tuilangi. He played a big, big role in Leicester's win over Saracens. Some great rivalry developing between those two teams, and that last gasp win for them was absolutely vital. But the Six Nations returns, the big game, of course, it's Wales coming down to Twickenham. Can they win a Triple Crown? They would love to win a Triple Crown at Twickenham, but if England can snatch that one, if they can win that game, they'll be three from three. Now, there is an opportunity for you and your friends, possibly, to represent your country with the Guinness Rugby Challenge. You and two of your mates can be trained by your Guinness Rugby National Ambassadors. For Wales, it's Jamie Roberts. For Ireland, Jamie Heaslip. For England, Ben Foden. And for Scotland, Sean Lamont. You'll go down to Twickenham, you'll be trained by them, you'll have some lunch, and then afterwards, your opportunity to face off against each other in a Four Nations Challenge. Details of how to enter are on the screen. Good luck. Here we are amongst the shirts at Bath's training ground and the man responsible for kitting out the kids, let's call them kids, is Chalky. Chalky, good to see you. You've got to make sure the players look good. These are the shirts, but let's face it, when you're dealing with rugby players, you are dealing with children, aren't you? I wouldn't call them children, but just just under adulthood, I'd say. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, no, they're not too bad. Some have their, they've, got, they've all got their own quirks. Some like a big baggy shirt, some like a tighter shirt. The bath yes. colours are famous. Do you, do the players still get as excited about pulling on the Bath colours? And do you think these colours still have that impact on the opposition yes. that they did of, of years gone by? Yeah, yeah. I, th I think that um, you see players who are seasoned players in this club have been here for years. People like Duncan Bell, when he when he puts that shirt on, you can still see there's some pride. Lee Mears, even though they've been representing their country, British line, to come back and pull that shirt on still means a lot to these boys. Here we have, here we have your two wingers. We have Matt Banahan shorts, <laughs> and we have Tom Biggs's shorts. Um, you are catering for all shapes and sizes, aren't you? Well, that's the beauty about rugby, isn't it? It's a, it's a position for everybody to play in, and um, and that really, I think, just sums it up. You've got two boys in the same position, but just poles apart when it comes down to their kit. This is gold, isn't it? This is oh. this is treasure for a rugby player. And it's amazing, actually, on the first day back of pre-season, that the kingpin is the kit man. Until your kit doesn't fit, then it's thrown back at you, and you're the worst thing in the world. We have... Uh... We have a range of studs in here. Talk us through these. The back row there is the uh, 15, 15 mils. That's for basically for hard grounds, good tracks. Uh, a lot of the backs tend to use the uh, 15s. 18 mil, that's if like a, a quite a softish sort of ground. And then the 21 mil, which, as you said earlier on, pain. This is the weird thing, isn't it? It's got a safety yeah. mark on it. Yeah. But and when it's on your back, this is this is on the bottom <laughs> of an 18 stone forward boot. Yeah. But don't worry, it's got a kite it's mark. Yeah, It'll yeah. be fine. Okay, so it's now that part of the program where we challenge our elite sportsmen to something which has absolutely no standing in the world of sport and is of absolutely no importance whatsoever. But it's a lot of fun. And our guinea pigs today, Lee Mears, Matt Banahan, Tom Biggs. Mizzy, do you enjoy training basically at Hogwarts? <laughs> Yeah, I think, as you can see, it's pretty uh, a pretty impressive place. Uh, and it's not completely finished yet, so it's uh, it's getting there. But I think, you know, when you get to have a look around, you'll be impressed. It is something that you really enjoy coming to. And you, uh, th we were chatting earlier, and there's some, uh, some little games that you guys play just to keep things spiced up. And you have got an elite parking space. Yeah, Tell I've got an elite parking space out the front now, being the 2012 pool champion. Uh, <laughs> after beating everybody, uh, it's not even worth talking about because it, it was just too easy. And the spirit good amongst the squad? Yeah, it's good. It, it, being here has helped massively, just having you know lunch together all the time. It's like doing breakfast and being in the gym. Before when we were at Lambridge in the university in the rec, you, you're travelling around and you're missing a lot of time. 
with one another, but the spirit's been good throughout, even when we've had those disappointing results. So we've got a great spirit and a good bunch of lads here. Well, listen, this is the challenge. Um, it is basically pre-technology age hockey. Go. One. Two, one all. Two, one. It's got to go through, not over. This is more exciting than I thought it would be, to be perfectly honest. Six, four. Six, five. And stops. Oh, he pinches it at the end. Go. One nil to Bigby. Two nil. Two nil. Six three. Six four. And stop. Go. One, One nil. Two nil. Three nil. Four nil. Yes. Four one. Yes. Four two. <laughs> Cheating. Five two. Work out that one. Seven two. Oh, it's just too easy. 0-2, that's 9-2. Stop. 9-2, that was a hammering. Two from two, Big well, how do you feel? Must be very proud. I think he should hand over his parking space at least for a week. Yeah, I, will, I think a day, so a day or a week. Serious business now. Um, there is big, big pressure on you guys. Not quite at the level you would want to be, but you get the feeling that if Bath get it right, with the facilities you've got here, the plans that are there for, for the wreck, if you get it right, then Bath are back in the big time, aren't they? Um, all of the, the pressure outside from fans and the public um, is all, always there, uh, but we put a massive pressure on ourselves because we want to be in that top four places in the top two. With two wins, as looking on other results, you can be back up into fourth or fifth, so give yourself the best shout, and we've just got to keep performing and keep getting the points. The coaches responsible for getting the best out of the players, Martin Hogg, Brad Davis, frustration. Is that a word that you use to describe the season so far? Um, yes, it is probably. We, we haven't performed as well as we would like um, in, in certain areas and, and at times in games. You know, we've lost quite a few games by a few points and uh, it's all ifs, ifs and must, you know, maybes and things like that. You know, if, if you'd have won those games, we'd have been a higher, higher up the table. Now Brad, the one thing that any coach wants when he comes in on a Monday morning is that little sheet of paper from the physio saying all your players are fit. You certainly haven't had that this season, have you? No, absolutely. And uh, most Mondays we turn up in the... Uh, the physio sheet's full of red, which isn't a good sign. And uh, it is in our season so far uh, that we've, you know, we get a couple of guys back, we lose a couple of guys throughout the game, and and it's it's, it's hurt us in terms of continuity of selection and continuity of training. But we don't want to offer up too many excuses. I think every time, whether you're a coach or you're a player at Bath, people expect, and and we're we're in a situation that we need to to push on up the table. And and this is a high performance operation. It's going to going to have to have a high performance uh, outcome. But pressure on the players, but pressure on you guys as well, because you've, you've got to bring it all together, haven't you? You've got to make it work. Do you feel that pressure? Do you thrive on it, or do you, is it a bit daunting? The pressure from us is, is actually to get the wins and, and the performances. So we're always disappointed after a loss. We're always disappointed after a win if we've not played as well as what we can do. So we're striving for that performance, and, and, and this is the environment we're in, and this is one that we accept. So accept it, move on, and, and do the best you can. There's been a lot of changes, but for the good, and that's why we, we're very passionate about driving it forward and making sure that we bring some silverware back. We're here, we're here for, the, for the long haul, and uh, you know the performances, and, and we put these things in place, eventually the results will come. With that defeat to Gloucester, Bath are going to have to push hard as they and the other teams head into round 16. And this is where the Aviva Premiership is going to get interesting, because with the Six Nations, the Heineken Cup, and the LV Cup, Juggling player resources could be tricky. Who will be the master tactician come the final on the 26th of May? We shall have to wait and see. Now, we are going to take a break, but we will be back on the 23rd of March. Join us then for more Guinness Behind the Badge. Come on, come on! Join the players and represent your nation at the Guinness Rugby Challenge. Guinness. Official beer of the RBS Six Nations.